Hello and welcome to NatStat Conversations with me, Pankaj Saran. NatStat is an independent research center and NatStat Conversations is our attempt to bring you insightful analysis of what is going on in the world and to understand where India stands in this fast changing world. We bring you dimensions relating to security, foreign policy, technology, etc. This is my first show as the convener of NatStat and I am delighted to have a guest today whom we all know very well and actually does not need any introduction. Welcome Mr. Akbar Thank to, you, to NatStat Conversations. As you all know, he is one of the most prolific authors, commentators, writers that India has. 15 books is the count I had last. He has uh, been in public service uh, twice as a member of parliament. He has been a minister, uh, but more importantly, he has established a magazine. He has edited several newspapers which have become household names. So, we could have no one better than Mr. Rakhbar to join us in discussing India and the major powers. Uh, this is more important because in a few days from now, uh, Prime Minister is going to go to the United States. It is a big visit, uh, first state visit of the current Prime Minister to the United States since he became Prime Minister in 2014, uh, addressing the Congress for the second time. Uh, so, it is a big visit. So, before we come to that and I would like to get your insights into what it all means for India, how do you see the world today? I mean, how does it look to you and what is the context in which this particular visit and in fact, our relationship with the United States is actually moving. I think we need to look at it from a bigger lens, from a bigger brush and then zone in into this particular relationship. So, yeah. welcome once again, uh, Mr. Akbar. Thank you and very much, Pankaj and uh, Natstrat. I am sure this is the beginning of something important, wonderful. Thank you. And uh, I think even if I may use the word vital to our understanding of ourselves and of our uh, relationship to the rest of the world. Thank you. Uh, nobody could have got a better leader than you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm honored. Thank you. The state of the world, yes. you know, is uh, always, always the background against we try and find a way forward. Mm. Uh, the world is always a product mm. of its past. Right. The most important, most important element of the 20th century, in my view. You know, we all know of this phrase called the long century, a century that has extended its influence on the next one and so on. And nobody has yet thought of a short century. And the 20th was a short century. It started in uh, 1914 with the First World War and it ended in 1990 with the collapse of the world order because the collapse of the Soviet Union actually mm. left one principal pillar of the world order in shambles. Now, you might think, and many people did think, that when one pillar collapses, the other pillar becomes triumphant. Not necessarily. In fact, the collapse of this single pillar actually leaves the other pillar very unstable. Mm. And that is actually what happened. The, what the war that we are seeing today to come to the immediate context yeah, yeah, yeah. is after all a war which is a direct consequence of 1990. No, in fact, if I can interject, uh, hmm. interject you, you know, uh, and I'm glad you're raising this because, you know, if you think about it, we actually might be witnessing what I would call a 30 year cycle. Hmm. You talked about the 90s, the early 90s. We are 30 years from that stage today in 2020s. In the 1990s, you saw the collapse of the Soviet Union, mm. the collapse of communism, the uh, reunification of Germany, the birth of the European Union, the disbanding of the Warsaw Pact, and NATO uh, had just, of course, was already in existence, but since then it has marched uh, and grown from the original 12 mm. founding members to 30 members today. Now, 30 years down the line, from that 1991 episode, which you have rightly mentioned, we have the early 20s, which have seen a multitude of events, which have been destabilizing, starting from uh, the COVID pandemic, the US withdrawal from Afghanistan, the Chinese aggression on the LAC, 
and then most recently the Ukraine war. And so everything is happening as we speak. You know, there, there is a direct, the consequence uh, will be more evident if we do not treat these 30 years as an abyss, mm. but as a sequence of important consequential events. Mm. And these 30 years have seen something very remarkable. The 20th century, short as it was, uh, the second half of it had a certain amount of stability. The stability was created by superpowers, yes. principally two. Right. And what I'd like to call the obedient powers, <laughs> right? right? Those nations right. which were very obedient to the, the very superpowers well put, yeah. Yeah. and therefore maintained yeah. A, a kind of uh, you discipline. Know, discipline, if you like, yeah. and therefore never let the Cold War warm up yeah. beyond a point, yeah. right? Just remember, self-destruction has never stopped human beings from war. Mm. So we shouldn't put too high right. a value on right. self-destruction as a preventive, Correct. right? Correct. The first two world wars mm. of the 20th century created unbelievable havoc, yeah. 100 yeah. million yeah. and yeah. so on. So the if, consequence of that was mm. an American sense of supremacy, right, the end mm. of history syndrome, which led it directly mm. into its own, you know, tripwire abysses, mm. most notably Afghanistan. Mm. So we had two major events. One was, of course, 1990, collapse of Soviet Union, and then 9-11. And the invasion of Iraq? 9-11. First, invasion yeah. of Afghanistan. Of Afghanistan, yeah. And then, encouraged yeah. by a, a sort of a pseudo victory, mm. the belief that it could repeat it in Iraq. Mm. Right? Now, this is very interesting if you look at it from the historical context, mm. uh, uh, con concept, mm. and see it as an author, more yeah. than, which is that instead of superpowers, we have nervous mm. powers. <laughs> so, <laughs> America Correct. itself has become a nervous power. Mm. Why is it nervous? Even mm. in what might be called, not listen, America under Reagan could mm. invade Grenada, yeah. or it could go to Vietnam, or it could yeah. go to Iraq, it could go yeah. anywhere. Today, it c does not, cannot, mm. sense of itself, mm. uh, uh, really find the wheels, mm. uh, uh, the psychological means to put infantry mm. on the battlefield. Mm. And it won't, even yeah. in Ukraine. Mm. The Soviet Union, descendant, son of the Soviet Union, Russia, yeah. Yeah. right, uh, yeah. has now become a nervous power, mm. right? Mm. And uh, in mm. fact, one of the subs you know, subsidiary questions I always ask is, is Russia more powerful as an empire or as a nation? Mm. Yeah. Right? yeah. And yeah. we are yeah. testing. Both yeah. these uh, propositions so, are being so tested. Coming, uh, yeah. So uh, just to uh, get... Now, the interesting aspect is that these obedient powers have now, with one or two exceptions, have become rising powers. Mm -hmm. Saudi, yeah. right? Yeah. And so on. Yeah. And in Europe, you can yeah. find them, yeah. right? Finding, yeah. trying to find the new yeah. water level yeah. in yeah. international affairs, right? Mm -hmm. And along with this, you had a world which lived outside the superpower matrix, mm -hmm. but lots of it, but principally India and China. Correct. And India and China have become the two great achievements of the 21st century, literally from the 1990s onwards today. Mm -hmm. right? And this rise of India and China has lent a new dimension to world affairs and it is very exciting. Mm. It is extremely exciting, mm. the ability of these two nations mm. right, to finding mm. their own route map towards world influence. So that's fantastically put. I mean, uh, the conceptualization is brilliant. What I would then tell you is and uh, put before you, is, I, uh, is this a code word for you to suggest that we are heading into multipolarity because this word multipolarity has been used and misused and bandied about everywhere by everyone. Do we actually understand what it means? Are you saying to me that the Prime Minister's visit to uh, Washington or the Indo-US relationship is taking place 
with a nervous power, as I can uh, uh, understand from what the the you know the conceptual framework you have outlined. So, are we dealing with a nervous power, and are we now becoming disobedient to uh, the traditional uh, balance of power that existed in the previous century? And are you saying that today uh, all bets are off? And uh, how does India then, in that case, assuming you are right? deal with a nervous power because you can have a rising yeah, power, you can have a weakened power, you could have a declining power, but to have a, a super power which is also a nervous power is… Uh, now, here, here is the interesting part of it. One, a nervous power does not mean a weak power mm -hmm. because if you are weak and nervous, you are inconsequential, mm -hmm. then we do not have to bother about you. Correct. Right. But America is, remains a very, very powerful force. Sure. I mean, remains powerful in economy, sure. in economy, in technology, in being ahead of streets ahead of the rest of the world. Sure. In terms of uh, its long stride ahead towards the future and so sure. on and so forth. Sure. Sure. Anyone who thinks so or mm. belittles America or misreads America mm. is making a huge mistake. Correct. Uh, so Some people so think America is in decline. Well, it, I'm inclined to consider them <laughs> mentally declined. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. So, no, right. no, not at all. Right. What it does mean is that uh, in such a situation where the Americans are no longer, like others, no longer sure mm. because all the settled notions are off the table. No, but India, yeah. India and China yeah. cannot be taken mm. for the forces That's they the were. Yeah. in the 20th century, right? And therefore, I must uh, now come to a point where I'm going to disagree with you, which is, it is time uh, that we abandon the terminology of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. Multipolarity, I mean, what does it mean except that there are a lot of nations in the world? <laughs> <laughs> so, let's not use words yeah. which actually yeah. do not add up yeah. in the yeah. mathematics of yeah, uh, strategic yeah. thinking. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah, very much, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Or they state the obvious yeah. and then make uh, no sense mm -hmm. after that. Mm -hmm. In fact, the term you used, mm -hmm. balance of power, which mm -hmm. was a fact, mm -hmm. and we are in the hundredth year of Dr. Henry Kissinger's life. That's right. Yeah, maybe may I've had the privilege of knowing him a little, mm -hmm. and may God grant him another hundred years. He did no favors to India, and though. That is, uh, I mean, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. We have always been far more generous than, <laughs> than, than <Yeah>. forgiving, <laughs> than, than generous. We, yeah. we, we believe in humanity yeah. and so on and so forth. So, but it is seriously ti time, and I think this is one of the key roles that Prime Minister Modi, from the position that he has reached and he has created for himself, uh, can achieve, is that the time has come for the balance of power dictum to be tempered by the power of balance. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is what we lend, mm -hmm. I think, to strategic thinking. Mm -hmm. India is one of the few countries, and I know in the last 10 years this is definitely, which is able to maintain, not only really maintain, uh, have uh, relationships flourish across binaries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Correct. It's, it's correct, only, correct. You know, at a time correct, when uh, this um, Iran, Saudi had not happened, we so have the I best of relations I, I, I with both of them, yeah. right? So, I, I think just to, you know, uh, in fact, I want to actually use the opportunity because you may not give it to me again. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> the floor is yours. <laughs> to have another term yeah. that we I find in circulation, it's a tired term, this global south. Yeah. Right? Good heavens. I mean, it comes out of the dictionary of, uh, I think, um, uh, paternal or patronizing thinking, mm. which is so prevalent, particularly in Europe and America, mm -hmm. as, as you know, these nations like India and mm. so on and so on, below the Willy Brandt line. Mm. You know, after all, it came to the line yeah. which from Latin America yeah. to Indonesia, yeah. but not, of course, Australia. Yeah. We can't put yeah. that there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that mm -hmm. line, mm -hmm. we must help them as if we are. You know, we need child care help mm -hmm. you know, in our little hospitals. We have been sent to hospitals by the accident of colonialization. And we must be, it's not true. Nobody rises out of being tended by nurse, nurses. 
you rise as a nation out of your own sure, abilities, sure, your sure, own ability, sure, sure. and that is what India has produced. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we are not part now of the global so-called. First, it should be abandoned. But even if yeah. we do want to use it, we are the new North, and it's time for Prime Minister Modi to go and assert it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? If we do want to use this, you know, patronizing term North and South, then we are the new North. Yeah, at least we are not the third world. We are not God. the third world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at I just this morning I was yeah. reading, uh, I was reading some figures. We are now the world's. Uh, we have had the largest number of uh, transactions. Yes, digital. Digital transactions, yeah, 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 ninety yeah, million yeah, yeah. across the ninety world. billion. That's yeah. one, that's something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's huge. Huge. Now, uh, our, our economy, latest figures is four point seven five trillion. And it could be more. No, but I think it has to be put on the table. Just one more point. Yeah, I don't believe in these figures, mm. unless mm. those figures represent the economic rise of all levels of society. Correct. If you can have five trillion or seven hundred trillion Correct. and yet have a deep poverty base, Correct. then you are not successful. Correct. And the great achievement of uh, Prime mm. Minister Modi, and of course, it's a mm. continuum from uh, previous experiences also, but mm. has been dramatic in his mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. is that the economic base, those mm. at the, the, of the base of the economic mm. pyramid, mm. they are rising mm. through the schemes that he has mm. brought in, which is uh, sure. mudra or jam sure. and so on sure. and so forth. Sure. Sure. Making this, those, uh, those hits or those uh, transactions yeah. are done by the poor. Yeah. They are not done yeah. by people sitting yeah. in studios. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, so that's very well put. Uh, but I want to uh, uh, take you forward on what you have said. So you have actually brought the conversation also to a little bit on the domestic side. But mm. I want to take you back to the international side again and to pick up on some of the thoughts uh, that you mentioned. Uh, and I want to also bring it back to the Indo-US and talk to you a little, little bit more. So what do you think is the current state of this relationship? You have seen it grow in the last 20, 30 years. Uh, you know, this phrase, hesitations of history, hmm. has become a current uh, and a fairly common phrase today. Do you see, I mean, do you, is this an, a no limits partnership to borrow someone else's words? What are the, what are the, the only no limits partnership is Mr. Xi and Mr. Putin. <laughs> <laughs> that also the only on paper. partnership, which yeah. which we will get a chance to discuss. Yes, and yes, so yes. They, uh, to so what to sh what should what does India want from the United States? What should we expect from the United States? What do we want from the United States? Which way are we heading, and how far are we going? Uh, tell me, I mean, in your perception. Okay, now let's get back to the phrase you used: the hesitations of history. Once again, very very uh, uh, straight from the literary textbook of the twentieth century. Right? Who was hesitating? We had no hesitation in 1970, a year mm -hmm. you may or may not remember. Of course. When Bangladesh of course. was being created. Sure, sure, sure. We had absolutely no hesitation yeah. in making a deal, a strategic deal with the Soviet Union. Absolutely. It was in our interest mm -hmm. and the Soviet Union responded. Mm -hmm. Right? And that became the basis of historic change. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right? So, hesitations are alibis and these mm. phrases should not be used as alibis. Mm. The Americans for a long while mm. were caught uh, not in the Dwight Eisenhower mode mm. but in the John Dulles mode. Mm. Absolutely. Which yeah. is that yeah. we can only be friends yeah. Yeah, if yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You're on our terms. Right. Now India was had not won freedom from the British to mm. surrender freedom to any other power. Mm. Mm. And people never understood that. Mm. India mm. and all its prime ministers. Mm. Right? I, I repeat, mm. we did not win freedom from the British and we won freedom. Mm. We, nobody gave it to us. Mm. We did not win freedom in order to surrender our strategic freedom, our strategic autonomy to anyone else. Mm. Right? We were not part of blocks. Mm. Nor are we going to be. So, this fact, the, the new equation, which I must say started with uh, Mr. Vajpayee's time, was taken forward by Dr. Manmohan Singh, yeah. as yeah. again now taking a major step forward by Prime Minister Modi, yeah. is that India and America sit 
as equals on the same high table no, of world how, affairs. But how can you say it as equals with, yes. a unequal, uh, with unequal powers? Yeah, we are equals because we are both equally independent. Mm. That's why we are equals, mm. right? We don't deal with some neighbor nations. Mm. We had a very successful visit with Nepal mm -hmm. just now. Right, right, we are looking right. forward to visits with Bangladesh, yeah, yeah. by uh, so Sri Lanka. Our economies are not the same. Yeah. Our demographics are not the same. Our ecosystems are not the same and so on and so forth. But we are equals. No, but it, the, the, this uh, transition to this uh, belief in the equality of the relationship is it coming more from the American side or from our side? For example, the areas of differences between India and America have been many, including uh, Pakistan and today Russia and yesterday also Russia and probably tomorrow also Russia. So this uh, approach to India to see it as quote unquote an independent country which might have foreign policy choices which are divergent from uh, the United States. This ability to probably step back a little bit and take a slightly more uh, Catholic view, if one can use the word, of India's choices. So do you think this is an evolution in the US thinking? Or is it, and is it, and if so, what is the reason behind it? Is it the rise of China, where they actually need uh, a power or a country or a civilization uh, like India? So, uh, do you see the change coming more from the American side or the Indian side? But you, I want you to tell me what should we, what do we want from the Americans? No, look, let's first get to the point that you were making. I think it is uh, very naive to believe that friendship is possible only we, when we agree with each other. Mm. I mean, we live in different areas, we yeah. have different uh, histories, we have different requirements, we have different needs. Right? Correct. The rest Correct. of the world did not necessarily want Pakistan mm -hmm. to be a permanent thorn yeah. in our flesh, which, yeah. it, you know, people forget we didn't start the war with Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Pakistan started the war within six weeks of freedom. Yeah. When, in fact, according to the archives and according to my books, where I have mentioned the transfer of power papers and so on, British accounts, British archives, that uh, we were ready to have conversations in Kashmir mm -hmm. from March uh, 1948. Mm -hmm. That mm. after the winter thaw mm. and so on, and once the pain of the refugee problem mm. had eased, we were proposing talks. Right. We have always proposed right. a peaceful resolution of our problems. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm. Pakistan imposed war, quite forgetting that again, rare exceptions apart, those who start wars don't win it. <laughs> Right. True. <laughs> so true. True. The there's actually a full litany of such cases. There's a full litany of such cases with rare exceptions. Rare exceptions. Okay. Yeah. They, uh, this, when I say that we are now, it has taken America perhaps longer to recognize the need for friends with different voices yeah. than us to recognize that America is a genuine superpower. Mm. Uh, I think even when Mrs. Gandhi went to America mm. at a time when frost was the weather yeah. of the relationship, yeah. even then we were giving due recognition to mm. America, except telling our friends mm. that, look, America on its part sent some of its best ambassadors, mm. its finest minds as mm. ambassadors to true, Delhi. True, true. And that too was recognition. Mm that you know india is a special case so in this context i mean uh, what you to go back to your question what do we want yeah certainly uh, i think if i see uh, if i break it down into a simple not simplistic quote then i think our prime ministers uh, the fulcrum of his thinking rests around national security yeah. and civilian welfare yeah. and the welfare particularly economic welfare yeah. that lifts the Indians at the base of the economic period to a higher status to a better life and so on he wants to see things now mm. he doesn't want to see just numbers mm -hmm. and statistics so you're saying America can provide the solution America can be a good part it can't provide solutions mm. our solutions are our own mm. but America can be an extremely important partner mm -hmm. in both these areas 
बिकॉज इकोनॉमिक कोऑपरेशन एंड ट्रेड विद अमेरिका कैन बी अ सोर्स ऑफ वेल्थ क्रिएशन ऑफकोर्स एंड वेल्थ क्रिएशन विच देन डजेंट ट्रिकल डाउन यू नो थैंक गॉड यू हैवन मैंशन दैट दी थर्ड टायर्ड फ्रेज ऑफ द ट्वेंटी सेंचुरी द ट्रिकल डाउन थियरी नो बट हियर आई वॉन्ट टू आस्क यू एंड ऑफकोर्स जस्ट सॉरी इन टर्म्स ऑफ नेशनल सिक्योरिटी एंड आर रिक्वायरमेंट अमेरिका हैज द डिफेंस टेक्नोलॉजी विच नो ऑन हैज no that's the point but is there a is there two divergent or two uh, kind of uh, opposite uh, kind of uh, policy impulses that are uh, at play one is uh, to get the best technology available from the united states and europe etc and the other is to develop your own capacities your own manufacturing base your own technologies do you see this kind of a dynamic tension between these two very legitimate policy goals no no tension at all no tension at all you know uh, until you develop your own capacities the security of a nation cannot await mm. uh, you know self development of your own abilities mm. that was the crucial mistake made in the 1950s are we never mm. going to learn from the 1950s mm. that we thought that uh, you know only what we produced ourselves would be sufficient for our security until in 1962 uh, the chinese gave our government then such a slap that a myth collapsed or at least a yeah. great reputation yeah. was deeply affected by it yeah. that's one and so let me so, bring uh, so until we achieve today india's defense production in the last few years has uh, risen from zilch yes yes to something significant but it is still not sufficient today but at least even countries like argentina are looking mm. at tejas mm. which is good thing so i would say what you are saying but is but that doesn't mean that we don't need rafal right oh. so you decide as india the pace and the quantum of defense cooperation with partners rather than allowing them yeah. to Tell treat us. you like a market correct for selling absolutely right well put Right. as any veteran yeah. uh, diplomat <laughs> <laughs> no no i am getting inspired in your company <laughs> <laughs> now uh, you know we are yeah. defense policy as far as i can say it can be summed up in uh, four words B- the best from the best mm. okay. that is what we need that is what india needs but it also needs that really strong domestic manufacturing industrial base without which no country has risen to be a genuine power uh, in Absol- the world absolutely right so that brings me to the next friend we have in the world which is china mm-hmm. and the story about china which is uh, uh, the single biggest story of the latter half of uh, the 20th and of course uh, the last 20 years or mm-hmm. two decades of this century where does how does china fit in to uh, the india us uh, relationship uh how far now china is next to us china is not next to the united states uh there is a relationship between the two which has been described as both competition and cooperation currently there are tensions between the united states and china how much of the india us relationship do you think uh is put together by uh, this chinese threat is the relationship does it go beyond china number 1 number 2 if china can you, can you just take this yeah, okay. part, you know yeah, very yeah. often when yeah. you say number 2 yeah. the answer to number 1 is forgotten yeah. <laughs> go ahead go ahead i say this because i want to make a point of course it all depends on whether we think of the indo us relationship as transactional or we think of it as something deeper mm. and based on some doctrine mm. of in uh, any world affairs international affairs mm. or relationships which we need mm. which are sustainable mm. right and not simply uh, a visit to a bazaar mm. right and if if any relationship is conditioned or conditional upon a third parties mm. then it's not sustainable mm. right I do not believe that Prime Minister Modi is going to as a guest of President Biden or indeed President Biden is going to greet him 
as warmly as he greeted the last time. Mm -hmm. You know, when he when we mentioned, he said famously that you know yeah. have the demand for guests at your oh, dinner. Yes, <laughs> you yes, know, yes, yes, yes. So this is a you know it's a, it's a gesture of warmth, mm -hmm. and you know, his invitation is based on uh, some real or even notional threat. Mm -hmm. No, India decides the level both of its threat. Mm -hmm. India decides the level of its response to the threat. Mm -hmm. India does not uh, take suggestions on how to deal mm -hmm. with the threat, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. any. Mm -hmm. And India certainly does not need any advice mm -hmm. on how to go forward mm -hmm. on a relationship with a very important neighbor, mm -hmm. yeah. right, which is yeah. a Himalayan neighbor and yeah. it's all across. Yeah. And, uh, on China, actually, I have a slightly heretical view no, no. on go uh, ahead on on the, you know the news is full of china invading taiwan and which year and so on i do not believe that the chinese will ever invade taiwan hmm. there is no way that president xi is going to invade fellow chinese hmm. with consequential harm hmm. and leading to consequential destruction hmm. uh, no invasion is pretty it's damaging Number two, it will actually mean in China's doctrine, no, in China's view of the world, that it is invading its own country. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> but can they call it actually reunification. Yeah, it's reunification. It is not, uh, you know, they have yeah. to be very but careful. Reunification On the force. other hand, let me suggest a scenario which I hope you'll find startling. Uh, could China go to war against America to prevent an American invasion of Taiwan? Mm. In China's thinking. Mm. Because an American presence, mm -hmm. let's say an American naval armada mm -hmm. landing in mm -hmm. Taiwan would be breaching China's territory. Yeah, correct. Correct. So correct. as a correct. cause, mm -hmm. right, uh, for war. Correct. 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 Right? It makes correct. rational sense from Beijing's point yeah. of view. Yeah. In yeah. fact, the chances of a conflict with uh, along the Himalayas is far more real than a conflict uh, with Taiwan. Uh, no, I agree with you. The Himalayan frontier is actually a much more palpable and a real frontier as compared to Taiwan. And actually the difference is that we've seen what happened in 2020 and we've seen what's been happening over the last many, many years. Uh, the, the issue here is that we have a new situation at hand, which is uh, the rise of China and uh, the position which America has, whatever position it has. And all projections point to the fact that within say 10 years, the Chinese GDP is going to surpass that of the Americans. And so we're looking at, again, to use what you may not like, uh, oft used the term bipolarity or a new cold war. These are, you know, very, very uh, uh, kind of hackneyed terms which are used loosely in literature. But I don't want to go there. I want to shift you to another uh, area of uh, interest uh, to India and to the world, which is uh, Russia, Ukraine and Europe. Just to get back on China briefly, China's problem in my view is uh, not its sense of uh, how to deal with the territory and it will play the old game of uh, you know carrot and stick and mm. so on and so forth. It's normal. Mm. In fact, it's banal. Mm. Right? China's real problem sometimes I feel is its commitment to imagined history. Mm. <laughs> you know? Mm. And well put. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah well I put. just uh, well ask put. our well dear yeah. friends in Beijing, yeah. wake up. Yeah. You know, smell this coffee. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All of it doesn't come from China. Mm -hmm. Some of it comes from Nat's trade. <laughs> 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 right. yeah. Yeah. So, to move uh, and why are China to move from uh, to Ukraine? Which you Russia, were, Ukraine, Europe, that yeah. whole uh, yeah. region. See, one of the things that I find a huge misreading, we be already began, mentioned that, uh, right. I did mention perhaps that Ukraine is a war, European war with Asian consequences. Yes, you did. You and why do I say that? I say that very simply because many people in the West believe that investing in Ukraine to bleed Russia would weaken Russia in Europe. Mm -hmm. Right? I find this uh, a bit laughable. Why? Because you cannot weaken a country mm -hmm. in an area where mm -hmm. it isn't strong. Mm -hmm. Russia became weak in Europe in 1990. Yeah. That's the story of 30 years ago, yeah. where Russia is going to become weak, is yeah. in Central Asia and Northeast Asia. Yeah. 
and that is where its true still absolutely uh, vibrant area of zone of influence continues mm -hmm. to lie. Mm -hmm. But if you are looking at the Ukraine war mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. Tajikistan or Uzbekistan or wherever I am just using this and you say that China, uh, Russia's ability to protect its interests in basically sitting in Delhi and looking at Gurgaon yeah. is under question. How is it going to manage the spaces of Central Asia? Yeah. Right? Yeah. How is it going to manage bloody Vostok? Mm. And uh, is it a coincidence that I, I, please correct me if I'm wrong, that for the first time in over a century and a half, China now has access to bloody Vostok? This, yeah. the limitless partnership, a phrase used by President Xi, but not used too often, yeah. is, uh, I think, going to be one of the great uh, empty phrases mm. which have been used mm -hmm. as a kind of momentary bridge. So, uh, so following from what you say, uh, sh what should we therefore do with Russia? I mean, we have had a relationship, we have a relationship, and I suppose we will continue to have a relationship. Yes. So, which direction do we go? We, with Russia, we d use the direction of uh, speaking first as friends, as friends who trust each other and have trusted each other over a long history. And uh, I think, as Prime Minister said very candidly, and speaking as a friend, not as an, you know somebody uh, who was sneering, that uh, wars do not solve anything anymore. So yeah, once. Once that message, now, you can't undo what has happened, yeah. right? That too is a reality. Uh, I think the way we have maintained the relationship during this crisis of the last year and a half and Prime Minister has taken the active line of uh, purchasing Russian energy at this critical time, yeah. right? All shows that we are not ready to sacrifice an old relationship, right? So let me uh, because of a telephone call from the best. Good. So let me then quote to you what one of my previous earlier bosses had asked me this question hmm. uh, about Russia. When you look at the India-Russia relationship, in what category would you put this relationship? In the category of being a vital, or an essential, or a desirable relationship? And I put that to you. And uh, you, you need not have any of these three options. It could be none of the above. But that I think, question, you know, uh, I don't, yeah. I am not a great advocate of sentiment. Mm. Right? So desirable is sentiment. Mm. Mm. Right? All relationship to survive must be useful. Mm. And must be useful to both sides. So that's the fourth category, useful. Useful. Yeah. It must be useful to both sides. Correct. It must be useful to Moscow. Yeah. If it is not useful to Moscow, why would it? Yeah. maintain a relationship, yeah. Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And um, all, all the rest said and done, I think that is one of the bedrocks, really, of uh, mm -hmm. any equation. So how salient is this relationship in the current Indo-US framework? I mean, uh, a lot has been said and done since the Ukraine war uh, between India and the United States, India and Europe, about Russia. and. Uh, every bit of strategic uh, literature coming out from the West has talked about India's Russia relationship as if it was something uh, on bordering on a crime or that it was something which was illegal. Pankaj, yeah. in the middle of war, uh, may I just make one thing, I never believe anything that is written. Mm. Right? Wartime is a, when the factories of propaganda and hysteria are cranked up, you know, put at their best, and they are part of war strategy. Actually, that's fantastic because the war of narratives yeah. is actually more important than the war on the ground. I think when it comes to the Ukraine war, absolutely, because both sides have uh, both sides uh, cranked needed, up, yes. have cranked up. Yes, 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 so yes. we, as bystanders, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh, may I end with a anecdote? Of course, yeah, I Please. was traveling in some yeah. tough territory in Pakistan. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, you know, <laughs> I realize we ago. haven't even discussed Pakistan. Uh, well, oh, thank you that. for beginning Paki okay, Pakistan. I was, I was uh, traveling in some tough territory, going to Storkham. Uh -huh. in a, uh, beyond the Khyber Pass, yeah. right? And uh, there was always a minder 
as you can Correct. imagine, sitting with me. He was a nice chap, like mm -hmm. most minders, he yeah. was a nice chap. And he gave me some extremely good advice. He said that they keep, uh, that there will be stretches on this thing. I mean, first he said that the law of this country only operates on these highways. Outside it, it's tribal law. So don't think that you know, the Pakistan Civil Court can protect you or me. Correct. Second, he said, very often you'll hear a burst of firing. Right? I said, whenever you hear a burst of firing, right, do nothing except stand still. Because it will be two Khans shooting at each other and they always hit the bystander. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, so, I think that sums up Ukraine and Russia. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I think. It sums so up rather Russia and, you, and NATO. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. When they, there are the two Khans. When the two Khans are shooting at so the, each other. The poor bystander. It, we must yeah. remain still yeah. as a good bystander yeah. Yeah. Uh, and occasionally check. Mm. <laughs> Great. What is happening there? So, thank you very much. I think we've uh, exceeded our time and uh, and thank you for... Uh, so, any last final thoughts uh, when we yeah. let's go back to the visit or the Indo-US or any other aspect yeah, you would like to leave some thoughts behind for I our think, viewers? I uh, think as we go through the process, yeah. I think, uh, you know, now the West is going to find a way towards a negotiated mm. some sort of settlement, mm. it, you know. I think it's run out of artillery, actually. <laughs> so, yeah. but I always worry about the boomerang war. Mm. Yes, yeah, I was going to ask uh, you that. The yeah. war that boomerangs upon its mm. perpetrators, mm. the great, uh, you know, King Pyrrhus, who defeated the Romans mm. and said one more victory like that, and I'm finished. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Correct. Uh, Correct. we have to be very careful about mm. what we do. I think under the guidance of the Prime Minister, mm -hmm. we have done remarkably skillful yeah. Yeah. kind of uh, policy. I am uh, completely uh, in agreement. Yeah. And I think uh, he will take the task of taking India another step forward mm -hmm. in the relationship with America and in this relationship uh, that his bridges that he's building across mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I think right. we in India are in a good space. Good. good. And, uh, you know, we should consider ourselves lucky because not many nations can say that with any degree of comfort. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Mr. Akbar. This has been remarkably insightful and a most interesting uh, discussion of a very complex uh, issue. But uh, you have actually brought out some of the really, uh, you know, the nuggets of uh, through your use of uh, the right words and phrases. But I agree that uh, today India is positioned uh, very, very well uh, to make use of and to advance its own interests, basically. Yeah, Not absolutely. use anyone, but simply to advance its interests with all major powers and in the kind of international environment that we live. And with a strong leadership and an economy that is growing at 7%, projected to grow, uh, we are in a good shape. So thank you so much for being with us. And uh, I want to thank our viewers uh, for joining in and listening. And I do hope that you enjoyed the conversation as much as I did. Uh, so thank you and see you in our next episode. Thank, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you Bunker. So Thanks a lot. Maybe you can shake hands. Thanks. Yeah.